Okay guys, so I'm going to do a video today on something I've done a few other videos on and it's the installing a Kubernetes cluster on Ubuntu. And um, we're going to start with the latest long-term support LTS edition of Ubuntu, so it's 24.04.3. And then also we're going to do the latest version of Kubernetes, which is just released the 12th, so that's just three days ago. So 133.4. And then also I updated a couple of these other ones that I hadn't updated from my past runs. Like we did container D and I think we were doing, uh, I know it was a one X version. So that's new. And then run C we had a one, two something. And then C and I was one, six something. And then Calico was a three, two, nine. And so I, I brought, oops, I guess I need to update that link. It says three, two, nine. It's actually three, three, oh, I'll fix that. Um, yeah, so I wanted to bring everything up to the latest on all of these components uh, that, that we use for this Kubernetes cluster. So um, let's get started. Uh, it's going to be the same design that we did previously. I'm going to build uh, a control node and then two worker nodes. And in my environment, these are all hosted in uh, Proxmox, so they're virtual machines. And I'm just going to SSH to them. I installed the Ubuntu already. So if you need any help with that, I do have videos, I'm pretty sure, on installing Ubuntu server, but it's pretty pretty basic. If you already understand how to use a virtual uh, desktop or a virtual environment like the, a virtual box or Proxmox or maybe VMware or whatever you're putting it in, um, then it shouldn't be super hard for you to just at least get it installed and configured. I'm using static IPs for these, and you'll see, like down here, we're going to add... Um, IP and host name to the host file because I don't have DNS for this and so we're just going to add this to every single host so the host know of each other and their IPs um, and then I do obviously a bunch of config here which I'll I'll explain some of it um, to be honest with you some of it I don't fully understand so we won't go into the details unless I can fully explain it um, but if you run these commands you will get a working kubernetes cluster with these latest releases of all the components so um, so let's get started so we're going to go ssh to the control plane node and let's see up time should be there we go 4 minutes um, let's go ahead and elevate ourselves to root okay so the first thing we're going to do is put the hostname IP combos into the host file. And this is just like printing it to the files. If you were to say cat host, you should see it in there. You added all of them. Perfect. And then uh, container D. We're going to do some overlay uh, net filter drivers there. Add some to the kernel, I believe, is what that's doing. And then in system CTL or sysctl, we want to add a bridging capability, and that's just for Kubernetes to be able to use network on top of your physical network. Um, and then running this sysctl system, I believe, it actually applies those changes that we made. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get container D. And again, we're using 214. Should be listed there, yep. And so the wget command is just going to download. Oh my gosh, hold on a second. Yeah. We're going to download to the temp folder. And then we'll extract it with a tar command. And so if we went to temp, you should be able to see that. Oh, actually, I extracted it straight into user local. My bad. But the, the tar file is right here. Um, and then we're also going to go ahead and get a service file for container D. Shoot. And we're going to save that with the wget command. We're going to save it right under etsy systemd system. So then we do a daemon reload on the system CTL. And now that service is available. So we should be able to enable it. If you want to see what that looks like, we can go ahead and check it out. But basically, it's the it's the boilerplate, I guess, or cookie cutter one from them, and it works just fine. So we just use it without any modifications. All right, so next up, we're going to go ahead and get run C, download the 1.3.0 version, and we're going to download right to user local sbin. 
That's done. Uh, let's go ahead and get the uh, CNI plugins for the network stuff. 171. Need to make a directory here and then extract that into the directory. Okay, perfect. All right, so the next thing we need to do is, uh, I probably should edit this text so it's a little easier to read, but we're gonna go ahead and configure the container D. Um, what we did is we ran container D config default and then and then piped it one to the screen and then teed it over to a file as well. So we have this config.toml. So if we go ahead and edit that, it's the basic settings for container D. Now, one of the things that we've done in the past, and um, I don't like when you when you use system CTL or or um, yeah, the system CTL daemons, you want C group in there. So to control resources. And so we need to add that to the run C options. And so previously, I think it used to just be here as in like the value was here, but it was equal false. So now what we're doing is we actually have to add it. So system D C group equals true to the config. And then you just write it out. Um, and then I think that was the edit, yeah. And then we just want to restart the contain the service, <clears throat> which is pretty fast. And then I have a command here for swap off. And really what we're going to do instead is we're just going to go to FS tab. And we're going to comment out the swap line, save that. So now there should be no swap. Well, once we reboot, there will be no swap. I'm going to go ahead and install some requirements for installing... Uh, the key rings and stuff like that for uh, getting the repositories for Kubernetes in here. So I'm going to go ahead and make a, uh, apt key rings, and then we'll go ahead and get some of the key rings for the Kubernetes uh, repositories. Let's see. This is actually two different commands. One's a curl command, and then the other one is an echo statement that copies it into a specific file. And then if we do an apt update now, you should see the, there you go, the Kubernetes repository here, 133. And it looks like it's all good. So I think we're ready for a reboot. And this doesn't take super long. And then we'll log back in here in just a quick second um, and finish this up. All right, so we're back in now. That was pretty fast. I think it rebooted in like 30 seconds or less. Let's get back in as root. So I don't have to type sudo for every command I run. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and install kubelet, kubeadmin, and kubectl for 1334. And it should pull it from the repos we just added. You can see those right there, these git statements, so that's good. And then installing, and then I'm gonna go ahead and mark them on hold so that when you do system updates, it doesn't try to upgrade your Kubernetes cluster on you. Um, you don't want it doing that. You want to be able to upgrade it on your terms. All right, so also I'm just checking to make sure the swap is disabled. You don't want swap in a Kubernetes environment. It's been my experience. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and run a cube, cube admin and init the cluster. And I wanted to call out that I'm using this 10.10.0.0 slash 16 as the internal Kubernetes IP range. Um, I would recommend... If your home network overlaps this, so if you have a 1010 in your home network, you probably should do a different subnet here. It's not likely that you do, but just calling that out, if you do, you're going to want to change that. And then if you change it here, you also have to change it in, um, I think this custom resource is down here. We'll, we'll check that out in just a second. So we'll go ahead and init this cluster, which this really doesn't take very long. <clears throat> it's pretty fast. Maybe I should pause it. All right, so it's actually already done. That it didn't take very long. So we're gonna go ahead and export a variable or system environment variable cube config so that we can access the uh, Kubernetes control plane. And so if I do a cube CTL get nodes, you should see my Kate's control here and it says not ready. So that's fine, it's just 
turning things up. If we do it a cube CTL get pods, oh, all namespaces. Um, you've got some that are pending, and these are going to stay pending until we add the uh, CNI. So don't worry about that. And and the the node will never hit ready until the CNI is up and the core DNS is up. So we'll do the Calico next. In this case, we're using Calico for the CNI. All right, so we're going to go ahead and, oh my gosh, I keep doing that. So we're going to go ahead and create the uh, deployment or the, the Kubernetes components straight from the YAML file on their site. So it'll download this YAML from there and install it. Um, if you're like in a corporate environment, you probably want to download the YAML first just to make sure it's the right content. Um, and then we're going to download a custom resources YAML and then edit that. And this is where that subnet is that I was talking about. So either way, you got to come in here and edit it. Because even with my example, when we did the cube uh, init, we said 10, 10, 16. You need to make sure this matches that. So we'll go ahead and save it. And uh, we'll apply that custom YAML. Perfect. So now if we do a get pods, you'll see a whole bunch of other stuff pending. And this is all part of the CNI, which is fine. It actually takes a little bit of time for those to stand up. But once they've stood up, then your get nodes, this should turn to ready. So I'll pause it and we'll come back in a second. All right, so now let's check again. You'll see everything's in a running state already. No restarts. Uptime is pretty good. So now if we do a nodes, the nodes should be ready. Perfect. So the next thing we need to do, it was a command that was outputted when you did the init, which is right here. You can join any number of workers, worker nodes by running the following command as root on each of those. So um, the other way you can do that is you can also run this command here. Cube admin token create join command. It'll give you the same or similar. So we're going to go ahead and copy this. Um, and then we need to run this on one of the worker nodes. So for the worker nodes, they're very similar when you install stuff. So you need to install everything here that's under the all section. So that's all of this here, all the way down to uh, here. You don't want to do the cube init on the worker nodes. And so you just want to get all the way down to this point. So for the worker node number one, I went ahead and got all the way to this point, so um, and then rebooted it. So we're going to go ahead and do this on the worker one, and then we'll run this join command as well. So let's go ahead and SSH back in since I just rebooted it. Perfect. Let's elevate ourselves to root. Perfect. Okay, so now what we can do is go ahead and install the same Kubernetes components. So I'm just going to have them install and then put them into hold as well. I copied both lines into the same. So you'll see it's finished install, and then you'll also see that they were marked on hold. Perfect. Let's just make sure we don't have swap. No swap. Okay. So now, again, skip this. You don't do any of this. None of this happens on the worker nodes. So we'll go back over here. We'll grab this join command that I did with this cube admin token create. I'll copy that. And make sure you get all of it, right? You can't, don't miss any letters there. And then we'll paste it here. And this will install. Well, actually the stuff's already installed. What it's gonna do is join the Kubernetes um, daemon, I guess, into our control plane over here. So now if you come over here and you say get nodes, you can see Kate's one is there. And then if you also say get pods all namespaces, you'll see stuff starting to to run. And these are the Calico CNI that's running on the other Kate's one um, node as well as the node driver. And as soon as those enter running state and ready state as well, it has to be ready and running then the nodes should show up as ready. Oh, that's interesting. It's already ready. Uh, it's, that's, I mean, it probably wouldn't work because the network layer isn't really spun up yet. Oh, now I guess it is. No, we're still got the Calico node, still one of, or zero of one. 
Okay, so the other thing you have to do on the control nodes is in this, at least in this example, you have to give it a role. So right now it was added to the cluster with zero roles, which means it'll do nothing. It's not a worker, it's not a control plane, it does nothing. So we want to label that node with the worker status. And so I'm gonna go ahead and label node Kate's one with worker. So now if you go back to get nodes, you can see it has a role of worker now, which means that when you deploy, um, make add deployments rather to this cluster they're gonna they're gonna get deployed to this this one has no worker uh, role which means it will not get deployments so you won't get like your applications won't deploy here but this one will take your app so it's probably a good idea you don't really want your workers on the control plane so in a in a bigger environment you would probably have like three control plane nodes and a bunch of worker nodes might be a good design there all right so let's go ahead and look at pods everything is running so what we would do then is we would run through the same steps again on two and add it to the cluster as well. And you'll have Kate's one, Kate's two as workers, and then Kate's controls, your control plane, and everything should be functional from there. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope that was helpful and it'll get you going on your Kubernetes journey. All right, thanks for watching.